Hi everybody, in this video and I want to demonstrate how you actually can be able to convert your frequency distribution for the quantitative data to the relative uh, to the percent frequency and the cumulated frequency distribution and the cumulated percent frequency distribution and hopefully this uh, video will be very helpful so if you are not able to um, uh, identify or create this uh, frequency distribution you see on the screen and you should watch the uh, the previous video on how to use the pivot table to generate this frequency distribution and uh, so keep in mind that uh, in our class we only focus on the pivot table method instead of using the beam range and because this is method are more ef uh, effective so before we move on to look at how we convert it to the percent frequency distribution and the cumulative, uh, cumulative fr uh, frequency distribution and the cumulative percent frequency distribution. I want to emphasize one thing is about the row labels here. So 0.5 to 1, 1 to 1.5, 1.5 to 2. So again, there are the GPAs. So the student going to ask, okay, there is overlapping between the classes because both, for instance, the first and the second class, both including 1. So what does that mean? So this is something you have to remember because you will be the one to create this table and you will be the one to interpret the table and you have to understand why we see one on both classes. So first of all, Excel is not making mistakes. So they are not overlapping. The reason both classes showing this uh, one is because there is one class including one, the other class is not including one. Uh, keep in mind, by default on the Excel, if you see the overlapping uh, uh, expression on your frequency distribution, or well, later we're going to learn the cross tabulation. So if you see the overlapping, it doesn't mean they're really overlapping. So by default on Excel, so they only including the lower limit instead of upper limit except the last class. So basically, what is the first class means is the uh, they are including the GPA is smaller and equal to 0.5 but it is smaller than 1 and then the second class is 1 smaller equal to GPA smaller than 1.5 so what I want to emphasize here is uh, when you see overlapping on the uh, frequency distribution if you are using pivot table to generate it you have to keep in mind Although they are showing the same, uh, uh, here's upper limit and the lower limit, it doesn't mean they, the one is included in both classes. So only mm, uh, if the, uh, so only the lower boundary of each class is included, is included, except the our last class. So when we look at our last class, so the last class here, actually both lower and upper limits are included. So this is the last class. So except the last class, the previous class is only including the lower limit. However, in some situation, you won't be able to see this overlapping. So maybe it's like 0 0.5 to 0 0.9 and 1 to 1.4. If you see that, since they are not overlapping, that means both lower and upper limit are included. So in two different situations you might see. So one thing I want to point out. So now I want to show you how to convert my frequency distribution you generating from the previous video to the percent frequency, cumulative frequency, and the cumulative percent frequency distribution. So let me show you how it works. So first, under the count of GPA, chose one of the value, and then right-click the mouse, right-click the mouse, and then we go to show value as. So this is the first one I'm showing you is percent frequency distribution. So you go to the second row called the percent of grand total, and you chose that one. Now you see your frequency distribution instantly convert to the percent frequency distribution, right? Okay, so let's go back uh, to the original table. So now what we want to do is we want to get our cumulative frequency distribution. So how should we do it? In order to get our cumulative frequency distribution, what you need to do is still choose one of the value uh, under the count of the GPA and the right click the mouse and now you do show value as we call the run total in so basically you try to add it up right add it up so you choose run total in so we only have one variable don't worry just keep it gpa and then you click ok 
So now you can see this is our cumulative uh, cumulative frequency distribution. So if you want to uh, add this one to your report, there's one thing you need to modify, which is the classes. So you can see the class label hasn't changed yet. So if you want to uh, express this uh, frequency distribution as per accumulated frequency distribution on your report. So basically, you actually need to create a new table because the table labels has to change, right? This one will be smaller and equal to 1. Or uh, smaller than 1, then here will be smaller than 1.5, smaller than 2, smaller than 2.5, smaller than 3, smaller than 3.5, smaller and equal to 4, right? So that is how the cumulative uh, distributions label should look like. So you need to update this part manually or typing the new row. But the number on the right hand side is what you need for the cumulative frequency, right? And so this is a cumulative frequency. Now we're going to look at how we're going to convert it to the cumulative percent frequency distribution. So again, it's under count of GPA. And then right click the mouse. So right click the mouse. And then this time we're going to chose show value as the one under the wrong total in. We use percent wrong total in. So that is basically we try to convert, uh, if converted to the uh, convert to the uh, accumulated percent frequency distribution. So we choose the percent running total in, and then still use GPA. See, so we got our percent accumulated percent frequency distribution. So that is what we want. So uh, hopefully this video is very helpful. So the last thing I want to add on is uh, if you're reading this table on the classes, and you will notice that we actually missing classes. So let me go back to my original uh, uh, frequency distribution. So you can see when we set up the table, it should starting from zero, right? Sometimes student might really got GPA is between zero to 0.5, but we don't have that showing up. So what's happening? So by default, uh, the Excel actually going to eliminate the classes that has a zero count. So basically, you won't be able to see those zero count uh, on your uh, on your uh, frequency distribution if you're using the pivot table method. So how, how about you just want to see which classes actually have a zero frequency because that's still important. It do give you information about your distribution, right? So you want to show where are those zero classes. So we actually can set up. So please follow me. How I will teach you how to set up uh, your uh, your out uh, your result here so that you actually will be able to see the classes has a zero frequency So what you need to do is it's not under the count of the GPA now You are actually gonna do under the row labels so under the row labels you can choose any class And the reason is because we are dealing with how we define the classes therefore we are choosing the value under the classes so under the row labels you can choose any row and right click the mouse so we're going to do two settings. So first, we want to show the, uh, do the changing on the, uh, the, uh, the, the uh, field settings. So on the field setting, and after you click the field setting, we go to the second tab called the layout and print, layout and print. So basically, we want to show on my pivot, uh, my frequency distribution uh, that the classes has no observation, has zero count, right? So therefore, we're going to choose show items with the no data and then you can click OK. So now you'll be able to see instantly so the originally we we are not able to see uh, smaller than 0, uh, 0 0.2.5 etc because you can see their count is 0 right their count is 0. And uh, another thing I want to point out is sometimes you won't be able to see those 0 they actually just blank and so by default by, it will be like that so there is a way to set up to let the computer to fill in those zeros. So what you need to do is, again, under the row label, choose any row, right click the mouse. So now you do um, uh, fill, uh, sorry, the pivot table setting. So you will do pivot table options, so which is under the fuel setting. So you can see now we, what we need to do is we're going to check this box. It's called four empty cells show zero. Four empty cells show zero. So if you are if you leave the bank, by default it's blank because I already adjust my Excel. So usually they are blank. So make sure you check this box and then type in zero to this blank and then you click OK. So you will be able to see all the blank cell 
fill in by the zero, fill in by zero. So again, if it's a situation you do want to show the classes have the zero frequency, so this is the method you should go through to show those empty frequencies. And so uh, that's what I want to talk about uh, in this video, and hopefully it is very helpful. Like I said, uh, we try to use the pivot table only for the quantitative data instead of using bin range, and so because it's more e efficient and more effective.